let, let's start with a very simple presentation. Um, welcome, thank you for being here, thank you for inviting me. I, I need one volunteer. And my volunteer is there, is, is there? Come, it, it will be fun. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so if you could, if you could, no, 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 this way. If you could, sorry? Punch him. Punch him. <laughs> <laughs> if you could push me a few steps there. Push? Like this, yeah, push, like, no, 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 but uh, like, you know, a few steps. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, 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 okay. And I will push you as well, okay? Good. And could, could you push me once again? Like. Yeah. Don't go, go, don't worry. <laughs> you, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. So, oh. yeah, so what's changed? What is the difference? Your, your leg is back. Okay, so uh, tr try the same, try the same. Do you want once more? Huh? Yeah. Okay, th the difference is I, I have my hand and I push with my hand in this direction. It 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 makes his force to 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 put me in the ground. The more he push, the more he stabilizes me. So when you do the same, so if you take your hands and take it upwards, I can push you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So the big thing here is that the small difference can apply it in the right way with understanding can m make a huge difference. So the, the title of this talk is 12 ways software developers screw up clean presentations. And this will be the one that I will screw. <laughs> um, I'm Krzysztof Kaczmarek. I'm training at Semantis, um, mostly front-end trainings, so if you like. It's pretty good. And I'm software engineer at Tuplux, and obviously I'm Kung Fu practice engineer, so this is why we had this small presentation here. Um, so why we are here? Um, maybe because you would like to um, earn twice more money than you have now, uh, or you don't believe in CQRS and you didn't want to go to the other presentation. <laughs> yeah, nobody likes distributed monoliths. So what do we do? What do we do? This is your part. Don't be shy. What do, you mean? what do we do? What do we do for a living? What do we what, what do we do in our work? I annoy people. IT. Oh, sorry? I annoy people. Annoy people. Annoying people. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> definitely, definitely. This is my part. So what else? Legacy systems, we produce them. <laughs> we are creating our future jobs. What else? Try and make it work. Try and make? Try to make it work. Try and make it work or IT work? It work. It work. What is it? Anything. Anything. <laughs> Anything. We don't, have, we don't have time for it. <laughs> we don't have time for it. Yeah, definitely. So maybe we are doing computer science. And uh, this, this is quite a quite interesting thing because uh, when, uh, when people start learning computer science on MIT in the 70s, um, the first lecture was about computer science and the professor was coming writing computer science on the table and it's crossing out computer uh, because what we do is not about computer in the same sense like physics is not really about particle accelerators or bio biology is not really about microscopes, right? So it's, what we do is definitely not about computers. And it, it is definitely not a science, right? So maybe it's kind of engineering or magic. And it's, it's, it's the same like with Egypt, ancient Egypt, uh, and geometry. So geometry comes to the name, comes from Gaia, meaning the Earth, and metro, meaning to measure. So geometry originally meant uh, to measure Earth, and the reason for that was that thousands of years ago, uh, the Egyptian priesthood developed the rudiments of geometry to figure out how to restore the boundaries of fields that were destroyed in an oil flood of the Nile. And this is a tremendously important thing, that 
for very young branch on knowledge. In former times, it was geometry, and right now it's computer science. It's very easy to confuse tool set with, with the, the real meaning, what we do. Um, maybe what this thing, what we are doing, is managing the complexity or managing the processes. But at the end of the day, what we are really doing, we are re earning money. We are earning money for our clients, and we are earning money for us. Um, so this presentation is actually not my idea. Uh, this is my Motero. Uh, it's really absolutely awesome UX designer. Uh, you sh you anybody knows him? You should. You really should. You should watch his presentation. He's really kick-ass. Uh, so he made an equation. So the equation is that you should uh, you should do the good work, and you convi convince you have to convince your clients the work is good. And this is the equation because if you if any of these things falls apart, uh, you are screwed up. Uh, if the work is not good, so there's no way to sell it. And if if you don't convince your client that the work it's good. Um, nobody will know about it. If you, it, it, it's something that every software developer has in his mind in some, on some stage of his uh, professional career, that you, you think that you will write a really good software and it's, everyone will buy it. But it, it don't work this way. You need somebody who will sell it. Um, so Alex Barshevsky mentioned once that uh, if you want and really good money. It's better to, y you can't be expert in some food. You can work very hard and you, you can have really good expertise. But it's much better and easier to take two common things uh, and combine them in uncommon combination. Uh, so probably it's like this, to, to just take software development and selling skills and money and happiness and you will, you will just be amazed by, by the effects. So the mistake number one, you are not there to be the client friends. You are, <coughs> you are not hired to be somebody, someone a buddy. You know, there is another name for that, and it's not software engineer. <laughs> uh, they hired you to solve the business problem. So you can't hire you because you are expert of what you do. Um, you, they hired you because they have some business needs and business need that you are uniquely qualified to solve. You need to get used to that. That is the, your value in this relationship, and by hiring you, the, your client acknowledges that they have this need, and you can solve it. Um, and you were brought to this project to accomplish this goal. Uh, what, what they not hired you for is not to make them happy or to be different. Uh, you, your decision have to be evolve around this, this client's goals uh, and not to please them. Um, it, it's very important to not confusing client happiness with, uh, with, with, with achieving client goals. They can be happy later after the project, they, they will be. Uh, if, if everything launches and goes with met correctly. Um, I once made this kind of mistake. Uh, mm, we, we, had, we had some kind of, uh, of project that we, we wanted to do API in the same time with the designs and with the same time with mobile app. And because I wanted to make my, my boss happy, uh, I, I just start to wrote the code and wi without hesitation go with every decision. Uh, but uh, we end up with, with strange mess. And what, what I should do is just to go and say, okay, this this how you like to do it. It's not the way how it should be. It, it we will end up with the mess. And um, all the clients have this kind of amazing way, ways of asking you to do things that run counter their goals. Your job is to convince them to not do those things. That is what, what, what you uh, hired for. Uh, you hired to meet their goals. And I, avoiding this kind of unpleasant conversation, what, how I did, it's, um, it's um, making you 
um, if you will not avoid it, it will protect you be be before um, even more unpleasant conversations six, six, six months later that may including people getting laid off. Um, so have, have this conversation now. I really recommend it. Uh, and it's, it's like with every, we are the service professionals, right? So if you go to the dentist, uh, would you like, would you prefer to hear that everything is fine or you, you want to know that you have some caveats? Um, or if you mechanics thinks that somebody is with the car, uh, will you not like him more because he say, oh, it's broken? So we, we, we were always hired before to solve problems to the best of our abilities. But sometimes it looks like this. Yeah, so I guarantee you that un having this unpleasant conversation during the project um, is really good, good thing. It's, it's some kind of part of our ethics. Mistake number two, um, not getting off your ass. Um, a client should never guess who is leading the presentation. Um, it should be obvious for the first moment who is in charge. Uh, let, let, let them know this is your, your room, this is your presentation, and make them welcome to this room. Uh, do you have any doubts who is leading here? The first job when you enter the room is to inspire this kind of confidence, uh, not just confidence of your work, and the confidence in your client that you, he, he hired the right person. Every interaction that you have is the opportunity to, to reinforce this kind of um, confidence uh, of the decision that the hiring you was the right decision or, um, or making them, uh, putting them in doubts. Um, so you will, feel, you, you will see more confidence if you stand up, the voice will going carry better, uh, you will look like authority and um, this is, yeah, this is a very important thing. And y you may say, but hey, I, I'm a pretty shy, quiet person. This is kind of my well-crafted persona that I maintained for many years. <laughs> um, but you know what, as you are, you, you are an engineer and this kind of confidence is the part of your job. When you are making interview, I, I don't know how many of you are making interviews, but if somebody is coming and he's um, very self-confident and proud, a lot of times he, he will get the better job uh, because you, you want to have some, someone who, who you um, are able to trust. And this kind of confidence is not for you. This kind of confidence is your, for your client um, because it's, it's making your client feel better um, and it's um, about them being in good hands. Um, and, but because on the end of the day, they have to think that this big fat check that they write your name on it, the name is right. Um, This has many other advantages. So if client trusts you, he will allow you to do much more. He will not be interested so much what kind of technology do you use, how many people you brought in the project and so on. You will have much more possibilities. Um, so you can sit quietly in the corner and speak with low voice, but you have to be ready to get back to work and do several rounds of revisions because the client was inconfident what you wa was showing them um, when you were lack of confidence on the presenting stage. Mistake number three, starting with the apology. Um, yeah, so I'm sure nobody is starting with apology here, but every time you apolo make apology for something, you are freaking your client out. And he thinks, oh my God, I wrote these people a big check and I, I gave them this, uh, the whole year's budget. And every time they come, they start with apologies. Um, and uh, every time you, you make this apology, you give your client a reason to distress you. Every time to make it, 
you put your future job in jeopardy. Uh, no, and no matter how, how much you hope to present, uh, by the time you go to this room, uh, whatever you have on, this is the, the perfect amount of stuff. Um, never apologize for what, for what you are not showing. It doesn't exist. And this kind of resetting of expectations should never be handled on the meeting. It can be handled before. Mm. Obviously. And of course, if you make some, some really dumb mistakes, like having the zipper open on spilling, spilling your water on, on the shirt, th this is the kind of the thing that you should, you really should apologize. And if, if you think about it, even if you have the scrum, and at the end of the sprint, you didn't deliver everything, don't, don't start with apology. Just present the status of current works, and it, it will be OK. Um, if you if you don't feel the the work is up to spec with with what you should do, just cancel the presentation. This is the the best way to do. Uh, but there is one trick: you can do this kind of thing only once during the project time, and you your client will forgive you that. Um, because what what the client thinks is when. Um, all your clients usually report to somebody higher up. So the, the moment he f you start apologizing, he, he is starting to picture himself uh, apologizing, apologizing to his boss. Uh, and this is really not a good feeling. Mistake number four, not setting the stage properly. Uh, so you gather this all incredibly busy people uh, together uh, they have a lot of things to do, uh, so make them know why they are on this presentation and let them know why, why they are an important part of this presentation. People like to feel uh, be, being needed uh, and they hate, hate having their time wasted, so uh, every time you gather those people, um, just do and answer two things. Why we are there? Start the meeting with thanking for the time and uh, let them know what the roles will be, um, what kind of participation you need from them. This is the opportunity to make them feel like experts and uh, they, they will love you for that. Um, let them know what is the stage of the pro project, what will be the next stage. What, what we need to do to, uh, to make this transition between one stage and the another. Um, and the second question is even most important, what, wh um, when we can leave? Uh, nobody wants, likes to have really long meetings, right? Or talks. <laughs> um, uh, so, if you need a scope approval, start some with something um, meaningful, I don't know, like we need the scope approval today. <laughs> and as, as soon as you, you, you have this goal reached, you, you close your laptop and go away. Uh, never, never try to have meeting um, take more time than after you accomplish your goal. This is a mistake I, I made many times. Even when I was asking to, to go for uh, to for go for conference, I, I went once to my boss with a plan to how to convince him that I really should go to this super expensive conference. And when he said yes, I started to convince him. And uh, this is like like really, really good, bad stuff. Mistake num number five: speaking about the code. Um, you know this picture, a developer comes and starts talking about uh, things that nobody understands, that in line 74, in some files there were issues because, you know, of this diagram and uh, it doesn't work well b b because of database and something, um, so just don't do it. Um, nobody wants to do it. I, I worked once in the company that we, uh, we have two remote guys that comes from time to time to our office. And one of them was a really good software developer, but he went always went into these details. And the other one was absolutely 
super bad developer. But because he knew that he is so bad, he never go went into details. He always said things about very ge 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 general stuff. So uh, we were <laughs> very surprised that our boss w was always thinking that the second guy is much better, <laughs> you know? So this, this, this is really amazing. Uh, number six, taking the notes. Um, so if you are giving presentation, find somebody else to take the notes. They, they are for sure very important, uh, but somebody else can do it, right? So this, this happened to every other meeting. It, it's even, even harder if, you, the, if your work is distributed. Uh, so people are not seeing themselves, you don't know what they write and so on. So prepare the right to theft. Number seven, reading a script. <laughs> you have to convince your client that you are really excited what you are pro showing them. Uh, be honest here, so this is kind of the show. Uh, presentation is a bit smoke and mirrors and you need these people to get excited uh, because and the best way to make it is to be excited yourself. Um, you have to show some passion in your work. Um, yeah. So um, in time when I w worked for Allegro, we, we had this kind of way to showing our search engine that every time it's with every feature is the best search engine in East Europe, in e-commerce, in, in our company. <laughs> but it's still the best one. <laughs> Um, number eight, getting defensive. Uh, so you are not your work, and your work is not you. Uh, so you are not your architecture, your code, your libraries, your technology. Uh, so you have to repeat this like mantra. Uh, you are not here to take orders, uh, and it's the work is not extension of you. Um, and it's not your kind of uh, personal expression. The, the client is always uh, free to criticize the work and clients um, is, is free to tell you if, if this is meeting the goals or not. Um, so, uh, you, and you are uh, free to present evidence uh, that you feel, that you, you, you show that it's on the contrary. This is the part of your job. Uh, so prepare the data to defend your statement. Be sure that you understand what kind of goal your client wanted to achieve and that you uh, properly measure it and validate it. There is the difference between defending the work and getting defensive. The latter is personal. It happens when you see the criticism uh, of, crit like criticism of yourself. Uh, good people do bad work sometimes and the bad people do good work sometimes. So this, this kind of, this word is really ma magical place. Um, and yeah, when, when you met this kind of critique, um, just listen what this client uh, is going to say you. Uh, don't feel like you, you have to def defend everything they, they're saying. Uh, and probably sometimes when, when a cli client is giving you feedback, the best, it's like great time to just keep your mouth shut, listen, uh, and but because all quick replies will always feel defensive, always feel defensive. You, you can say something like, thank you, that is interesting feedback, John. Uh, let me think about it and get back, back to you. Uh, yeah, so I, 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 I learned it with, in my second job, I, I had really crazy fights with my, my boss and I, I realized that if I just, just listen to him and say nothing, it's, it works much better. Talking about how hard you worked. So it's, uh, if somebody say to you that it seems you worked really, really hard on what you did, it's, it's the, the worst feedback that you can get ever. And this is how you should behave. So I will stop it. Okay. Um, so stop using your work like the time card. You, you don't want it. You, you don't want to be um, counted um, how, how many time you spent, right? Yeah, we have creative work. So it means it should usually look like it it's took five minutes and it was effortless. Um, I guess every one of you 
had this kind of situation that client want one additional button on, on the field and they destroy whole domain that you um, modeling for many months uh, for your application. I see some smiles, yeah. And uh, cl client will be irritated for sure that he paid one development week for something that seems to be written um, nearly effortlessly. And uh, for sure, uh, don't show him in any for any reason the details of your work and don't explain uh, wh why it took so much time. Y you will look like a defensive person and very un unsure and it seems like you are asking for validation. Yeah. Okay, M mistake number 10, uh, reacting to the question like the, uh, the Chang'e re request. Why is this blue? I can change it. Why is this logo small? I can make it bigger. Uh, why the work workflow is not three steps? We will make it three steps. Um, so I, I, I made this mistake t 10,000 times. Uh, so some, but sometimes your client have just the question. Uh, and it's, uh, the question is just looking for reasoning. Uh, so by offering a change request, you opening the Pandora box. You immediately go transfer everything that you make in a big pile of doubts and every decision that you make during the projects uh, is really open for revisiting. Um, so, and if you give, give up just to answer this kind of question, um, you, 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 you will have to do a lot of work. So it's really pointless. There, there, there is another thing that it may be. Uh, this is bike shedding. It means that if you are creating a power plant, uh, nobody will be interested in how to make power plants because they, they don't know how to do it. This is, this is why they hired you, right? But uh, every, every bat, everyone will, uh, will have opinion on the color, how the uh, sh uh, shadings for bikes look like, what is the color or where it should be placed and so on. So usually you will get a lot of feedback about small details that are really not important, right? Mistake number 11, not guiding the feedback loop. Um, there is one, only one question was, that what, what do you think? Um, have you ever heard about projects where Business people influence technology in the wrong way. Uh, I, I bet they never said, they, they, they just never know what kind of feedback do you, do you want from them. Uh, most cli clients don't have absolutely no idea uh, what kind of feedback do you need. And there is a reason for that. They are not training that. You have to guide them. Um, because anything that helps your job is part of your job. Um, so my CTO in, in one of my former companies said to me once that um, they had a problem with mailing systems. And he went to CEO and said that, oh, this is third party problem, uh, so it's not, not, not our issue. And uh, he never regained his respect in the back. So and anything that helps making our job is our job. Uh, so this is examples of the questions that you should probably ask, right? Uh, and the last mistake, uh, asking, did you like it? Uh, did you like it? Did you like my presentation? <laughs> uh, so in this very moment, uh, you, uh, when you ask your client, did you like it? Uh, your client does feel like you you give up all the work you have done to build your image, image like as expert, right? You, 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 your, client, your client doesn't want to think if he like or not. You, you hi he hired you because you know what is the good job, right? And your job is always good. Did you like it? <laughs> so, um, yeah. And there is one way to tricks that you should really learn more. Learn the client's name. <laughs> Thank you. 
Any questions? Hi, I, I think it would be nice to conclude this uh, presentation with a client definition, because you so, okay, yeah. use that in your right. examples. Uh, if, if you think about it, uh, because usually when you, you think client, you think about the person that comes from outside of company, right? Uh, but it is not the case. Your client, you can be your manager, your teammate, uh, because this kind of selling is not, not just the selling that you are going to sell you, you work uh, as a final product. Maybe you are selling new approach to architecture, right? So e everyone who is taking your, 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 your work in any way or cooperating with it is your client. Is this answering your question? You mentioned that we shouldn't tell how much work we spent on something. So how we should convince the client that adding this button is costing so much if you say it's five minutes of work, so I won't buy $1,000? OK. Um, th th this is a valid question. Mm. So I, I am not saying that we shouldn't say that it's one week of work or three weeks of work. Uh, but you, you probably don't want to go to explain him why, why it's taking so much time. Because, uh, so, so I, if I said something like, you, you shouldn't say how much time do you need for work. So uh, this is my mistake, it shouldn't be there. But it's, we shouldn't say that, okay, this, this kind of uh, project, uh, it will take so much time because we will work very hard and so on. Because he, he is interested in the effect, in the final effect, right? So when you go to the, your lawyer, you, th th this is uh, as well a common, common, common problem with lawyers, that uh, somebody come to them and said that, uh, are saying that, could you, could you just take a look in my um, ag agreements, if they are okay or not? So it, it's like you don't want to show him how you make the sausage, right? You can disagree with me, so we, we can talk about it later as well. Okay, so uh, if I understand correctly, we shouldn't say how much time we need for this, or we shouldn't No, no, we should. We definitely should. We so so we shouldn't to. say, for example, that we need to modify one layer, second layer, third layer to get this button. This is what you are saying? So, so, so excuse me? We shouldn't say that for adding this button, we have to modify database layer, app yeah, yeah. layer, and things. I, like I, I think so. I, I think so. In, in the in the final way, your your client is, um, doesn't okay. care about it, right? Uh, okay. Imagine that we work in Scrum and uh, we didn't make some functionalities in some sprint and we had demo um, and we didn't make one of or two uh, stories and you told something about we shouldn't tell anything about things what we didn't do. No, no, we should update the status honestly. Yeah, we yeah, just show the status. Yeah, but Usually to be people ask why. So yeah. So you have to tell yeah, you, you can say why if you if you want, but it's um, it's kind of explaining yourself, uh, right? So th th this is like the tough part to understand how how much of ingerence you want to have your client in your project, because if you start to explain why, so this is not like the st uh, stiff. Uh, rule that you have to follow, right? But uh, uh, the moment you start to saying, okay, we didn't finish that because we uh, did th that and that, uh, you start to have this process that, because why do you want to explain yourself? So w what will be the result? The result, yeah? But we promised that we will do this. Yeah, okay, and we, we didn't deliver it, right? So. So we forgot? Yeah, so the next time we'll m deliver. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so because uh, honestly, I, I would say sorry if I 
if I didn't make my work correctly. So the question is, if, if I make the best work, uh, the best to my abilities and the best to my resources, right? Uh, I, I always can say uh, why it happened if I want to ask for more resources, or we have some external problems that issues that uh, that that uh, our client um, can arrange for us, right? Uh, so sometimes you have to provide some details. It depends, but the, the most important thing is to not making uh, our clients inconfident. So. Uh, from time to time, it will happen that we will not deliver everything. Uh, in some methodologi methodologies, like in uh, the last that Google started, it's even the rule that you never met your goals, right? Because you want to push hard. So, but when, when you start, I, I'm saying only that the moment you start to apologize, you put yourself, you kind of in the, this kind of state of mind that something is wrong, and you don't want it. You don't want it, right? Sometimes you have to explain the context. Sometimes do you have to ask for more resources or to change the schedule or plan or something, right? Thanks. So then, isn't it better to not promise anything? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Especially to your wife. <laughs> Okay, so thank you.